Greetings YouTube, Fuzz here and welcome to what is going to be a different kind of walkthrough than what I've done in the past. Let me give you a brief introduction so you understand what you're getting into here if you watch this series. So this is the Windows edition of Final Fantasy XV and I'm going to be going for a 100%, at least I'm aiming for a 100% walkthrough of the game which can be followed along with either the Windows edition or the Royal edition or the normal edition that came out before those versions of the game as well. Uh, but the plan is to cut out all of the fluff. So normally where I would show cutscenes and the travelling etc etc that we do in the game, I'm not going to be doing that in this walkthrough. So if you actually want to watch the game and enjoy the game and the story and what have you, then this probably isn't the series for you. I would recommend watching my live streams or watching the archives from my live streams in order to get that uh, kind of playthrough. This is going to be a heavily edited walkthrough that's literally going to be showing you where you want to go and when you want to go there and what it is you need to do in a systematic order. So a systematic order uh, in order to get everything done in the game that you will want to do. So not just the story but the optional content as well. So this is really aimed solely at those that are playing the game and want to know what to do and where to go. That said, that's pretty much what this guide is going to be. If you do enjoy watching please hit the like button on these videos and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And this is really an experiment for me doing a walkthrough in this fashion, so let me know what you think about it as well in the comments as we go along. And maybe I can improve things or change things up a little bit as we make our way through depending on what you guys actually want to see. But without any further ado guys, let's get started with the first episode. So I'm going to skip out the opening cutscene and get straight into the thick of the action. See you there. So when you first start a new game, you will be given the option to play the tutorial. And if you've not played Final Fantasy XV before, then I would recommend that you do this since this game does change a lot of things up in terms of the gameplay mechanics from previous Final Fantasy games. And with the Windows and Royal editions of the game, you can also push in both analog sticks at the same time to enter first person mode, although you do switch back to third person for cutscenes. So anyway, after you've completed the opening introduction where you push the car, the regalia, and get the title screen, uh, you're going to find yourself in a place called Hammerhead. So after you finish speaking with Cindy, you want to go and loot this item, which is an Oracle Ascension coin, just to the west of the shop. And then head into the tipster, because before we do anything in terms of story, we're going to speak to the tipster and collect our first set of hunts. So hunts are optional content in Final Fantasy XV, but the other thing you can do with a tipster is talk to them, and if they've got this blue exclamation it means that they've got something to tell you, and all this is going to do is put points on your map and areas of interest that you don't know yet exist. So every time you visit a tipster, make sure you talk to them and they will update your map for you, with various havens which are camp spots, parking locations and other points of interest as well. So as I was saying, hunts are something that you're going to want to do a lot of in Final Fantasy XV. And these are going to allow you to accumulate experience, item rewards and gil. And you get them from tipsters such as this guy here. Now if you're not playing an updated version of the game, you may only be able to select one hunt at a time. So I do recommend updating your game if you're not playing Windows or Royal Edition in order to be able to select up to 10. And we're going to start by selecting all three of the hunts that are currently available to us. Now the monsters that we need to kill for a hunt are generally only going to be available once that hunt has been selected. And you can also head into the quest menu in order to track specific hunts or the main story quest depending on what it is you want to do at the time. Now as we leave the diner here we should update the main story quest as well which tells us to speak to Cindy and we can do that immediately or we can come and do that a little bit later if we want to do some hunts and whatnot first. Before we go any further though, since we've just started, I want to talk a little bit about gear. Now if you're playing the Royal or Windows edition, you're going to have a lot of extra gear that would normally have only been available to those that pre-ordered the game when it originally came out through various retailers. But all of those pre-order bonuses have been included here for us and there's a few items of note that I do want to mention. The first is the Ragnarok weapon, it's a one-handed sword. And is a tremendously powerful upgrade for Noctis over the engine blade which he has equipped as default. You can see the stats change in the bottom left corner there. 
and that puts his attack to a massive 172. And Gladiolus is going to be wielding a two-handed sword. We can change that for the Massamoon. And then the Mage Mashers, which are a pair of daggers for Ignis, are also going to be an improvement for him. Now, unfortunately, there is no uh, gun pre-order bonus, so Prompto will continue using his handgun. Next up, we have a whole host of accessories. And a couple of things of note are the Ring of Resistance. So if you're going to be a magic heavy user, then you will want to equip this because it's going to stop friendly fire and it is very useful in that regards. Then experience band is also an interesting item. So the way experience works in this game is a little different than in previous Final Fantasy games. Now you'll still gain experience as normal by killing enemies and completing quests. But that experience won't automatically be added to your total levels. Instead it will be stored in a bank until you go to sleep. So when you rest at night in game this is, either at a campsite, in a caravan or in a hotel, then all the experience you've accumulated will then be added on in order to level you up. Now what the experience band is going to do is stop that experience from being tallied when you rest. It doesn't waste the experience, once you unequip the band it will then be tallied the next time you rest. But if you want to go for a level 1 playthrough, or if you want to rest and add that experience of a hotel with a higher bonus to experience, then an experience band is going to be used in that regards. And some of these other accessories will increase the AP you get from performing certain actions in battle. These can also be equipped by your party members. And I'm going to recommend you equip all three of those accessories immediately, because AP is used to purchase new abilities, and the more we can get early on, the better. And now finally we have attire and we get a whole host of different clothes, uh, clothing outfits that we can equip immediately. Uh, many of which have been introduced to the game over the past 12 months. So one of the most interesting ones is the Magitech Exosuit. This actually gives you 30 minutes of complete 100% invulnerability where you can take no damage at all uh, every 24 hour period. So if you're struggling with a specific boss, even some kind of super boss, then you can equip this suit and take no damage for 30 minutes. But once you've equipped it, the 30 minute timer is continual and you do have to wait until the next day in order to get that bonus again. Interestingly, originally this was supposed to be a Power Rangers outfit, uh, but unfortunately a whole host of legal problems crept up upon Square and they had to delay the release of the Exo suit while they redesigned it. It still looks cool though. And many other of those clothing outfits will adjust your stats, so make sure you choose what it is you want to use. Some of them will adjust your health and MP, others will adjust your strength. So it's entirely down to what you prefer to boost. Uh, the one that I'm using here will increase health. And you can also, by the way, change the attire on your other party members as well. They too have the exosuit for invulnerability. So now we're going to get into the thick of the action, and we're going to head to the quest menu and select this first hunt, Howling Wind of Hunger. And what this is going to do is track the hunt for us on the map, so we can see it's on the mini-map up there. And we're just going to race towards it. I've got my mini-map set to fixed location, but you can have it rotate in the options menu if you prefer as well. And the hunt itself is a low-level hunt, so if you follow the combat tutorial you shouldn't have too many issues. And the game itself will give you a few hints on how it is to attack, but with your new Ragnarok sword equipped, you can literally warp strike, and you can do this with a PlayStation controller, by holding down R1 to lock onto an enemy, and then hitting triangle. Now this does use MP, so you will have to recover MP, which does happen naturally over time, uh, if you do happen to run out. So once those enemies are killed, what I've gone ahead and done here is selected the next hunt, the Varmints of the Wastelands, and this is a slightly higher level hunt, it is going to take you a few minutes. But again, with your powerful equipment, it shouldn't be too challenging. And once more, just follow the map to the location. Now, you saw that note there, which tells us how to defend. And it says to use the square key. Obviously, if you're using mouse and keyboard or Xbox controller, it's going to be the equivalent button for you. But one thing I will note about defending is you hold the defend key. So on the PlayStation, the square key, you hold it down to defend for a second. Don't just click it. Right, before we move on, then let's just spend some of these ascension points we've been accumulating. This is why I told you to equip those accessories. We've already got 49. And it doesn't ultimately matter what order you learn these in, but there's a few tips I think you're going to want to know immediately. 
One of the first accessory, so Ascension point nodes that I think you're going to want to learn is the enhancement technique for Ignis. And what this does is when you use it in battle, it's going to imbue Noctis's weapon with an element that the enemy you're fighting is weak to. So head over to the techniques tree, and if we head down to uh, Ignis, which is the southern part of this tree, then we can learn Regroup, which is a nice AoE heal, and we have to learn it as a prerequisite to enhancement there. So we'll learn that for 8 ascension points. And then we're going to go and select enhancement and learn that as well. Now we will have to set that in the techniques bar for Ignis a little bit later so that he can actually use it in battle. But I don't want to confuse you with too much at once. So what's important now is that we go ahead and learn it. And once you've got that, what you might want to learn then is some exploration nodes. And what these are going to do is actually allow you to gain AP and experience faster through various different means. For now, AP is the important thing. And since we are going to be camping quite a bit, I'm going to learn Happy Camping. And I don't think we can afford this one yet. So once we've spent a few points in the Ascension menu, we're going to continue on our journey. Back to Hammerhead now that we've done those first two hunts. And hand those in, as well as continuing on with the main quest. So first things first, I've popped back to the tipster here. Once you've completed some hunts and speak to a tipster, you'll automatically hand those in and collect your rewards. So what's important at the moment is that we're getting some gill. So we're going to hand both of those hunts in there. We've still got one left in our log, which we'll do a little bit later on. Once we're closer to the area, since it's a bit further over to the east than those other two. And now what we're going to do is take a brief detour by heading into the shop. Now the shop is located just next door to the diner. And there's actually three items we want to purchase. And these are potions, antidotes and repair kits. And the reason for that is all three of these items are going to be used in other optional side quest content scattered throughout the map. So always on your journey through Final Fantasy XV... Right from the get-go, make sure you carry a supply of those three items. That's potions, antidotes and repair kits. You never want to be out on the road without them because there's various people that are going to be asking you for them and they will complete quests, give you experience, gill, whatever the case may be once you give those items to them. Now we don't need to purchase a lot of those for the time being, just enough to keep us going. You can also buy some pretty cool stuff here if you've got the gill for your car which we'll be putting to use a little bit later, including some older soundtracks from the previous Final Fantasy games to play on the stereo. Okay, so now we've done that, let's head back outside and over to Cindy, continuing on with the quest. So this is the Pauper Prince, we can speak to her and that will continue on with this. And this is going to be the first cutscene with an option for us to select as part of the dialogue. Now these don't make any big difference in terms of the long-term effects of the story, all they generally do is give us a different reward depending on the option that we select. So for example by selecting Ask My Friends, each party member will get, I think it's 30 experience. Uh, if we chose to ask for a discount then I think we get 2 AP uh, ascension points and then the other option gives I think 100 experience to one party member. So that's pretty much the only difference between those, don't worry about selecting the wrong option. And the first objective for us is to go and eliminate 3 pests, although it's actually three groups of pests rather than individual enemies there. And if you make sure that the main quest is selected as the objective to track, then it will guide you exactly where you need to go, and each time it will take you to a group of these scorpions that we need to kill. You could also see that giant pole sticking out the ground, you can actually interact with that for an interesting cutscene. Okay, so I'm just finishing off the second group of pests here. And then the objective will automatically update and guide us to the final group, 700 feet away. And once we've taken care of the third and final group of enemies there for that quest, that will actually complete the pauper prince and kick off the next quest. And I'm not sure why prompter just appeared out of thin air there, that was pretty weird. So the next quest should start for us automatically and basically involves us having to hunt down a chap named Dave. We need to go and rescue him. So we'll follow the objective over to the location here, which is a giant shack type place. And I'll just skip ahead here for your convenience. And as we head inside, we'll see a note of some kind left on this trolley. So we interact with that for another cutscene, 
and that's going to thrust us into a surprise battle, having learned about a secret type of enemy, or a dangerous type of enemy, rather. So we need to go ahead and take care of these guys. They're not very challenging, in all honesty. And don't take too long to defeat. Just put your combat practice into effect. And then the objective will update once they've been defeated to take us to another nearby shack. Which is also surrounded by enemies, so we need to take care of those first. Hey, who's that? And so after that battle, we commence another cutscene here, completing the Hunter Becomes the Hunted quest. So here we are introduced to Dave. Looking for you. Didn't mean to cause y'all any trouble. And he's very grateful that we've rescued him. And what he's going to do is first of all give us an option of dialogue that we can select from. Once again, not affecting anything important, although we do just get slightly different experience slash AP rewards depending on the option that we choose. So just go for what you want really. I would say do it for free just because it's the nicest answer. And after the dialogue here, we're going to get an interesting item known as Magic Flask. And as is probably obvious by the name, these actually allow you to store magics that we collect out in the field. So if you play Final Fantasy VIII, you'll be familiar with the drawing system. And a kind of variant of that occurs here in Final Fantasy XV. So for now, keep hold of that Magic Flask and we'll explain it a little bit further. Uh, in a moment's time. So that updates the quest and now we have the Mutant Marauder which is that enemy we saw hinted at earlier on on the note on top of the trolley. But before we do anything else we need to just go ahead and kick off another cutscene. These little blue dots by the way are loot which you can grab. So when you see them pick them up. And as you run a little bit towards the objective then Ignis will quickly interrupt you and advise that we need to rest up for the night. Now it's important not to be wandering around at night time, especially early on in the adventure. And that's because nasty enemies known as demons patrol the place at night. And they're much higher level than we are going to be. And we'll make mincemeat of our party if we try and take them on. So now we get to learn about how resting and camping works. And the objective has updated since the first time we rest here is actually part of the quest. Later on it isn't. So we can follow the objective to a campsite where we can, uh, well, set up camp for the night. And when you approach the campsite, you can get a couple of options. But the one we're interested in at the moment is the simple option to camp. And each time you camp, Ignis is going to be able to cook a meal for you. And what's interesting about this is that the meal he cooks will give you a temporary buff, which is going to help you out in combat or through various other aspects of the game for a short duration. So you can go ahead and camp now, choose the food buff that you want, and so long as you don't have an experience band equipped, you will also tally up your experience as well and level up. And since we've done a couple of optional hunts, we should get some pretty decent levels here. So instead of just going from level 1 to 2, we should hopefully go to about level 3 or 4. So next morning then, the quest is going to update for us, but before we actually go and tackle the Bloodhorn, I want us to go and loot a powerful secret weapon, which is going to be a big help in that fight. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is open the map here, and you can push the right analog stick down to open the map immediately. And select this location just close to where we are currently based, uh, and put a map marker there. And you can see that's appeared on the mini map now as a little silver arrow, because that's roughly where the weapon's located that I want us to go and loot. Before we do that, however, I want us to note that around campsites we have the various elements, and we can actually draw from these elements in order to craft magic spells. So I'm not going to talk about crafting just yet, but for the time being, it's just important to note that around campsites you have the elements, lightning, ice, and fire, and it's important to draw from them uh, for later use in terms of crafting magics. So I did mention that you do have a Final Fantasy VIII style drawing system and this is what I was talking about. And sometimes they can be a few feet away from each other so just look on the mini map as to where each element node is located so fire was a little bit out of the way there but you do generally always get fire, ice and lightning. So with that done let's go and collect this secret weapon. So now we're going to be heading over to that silver marker that we placed and not the orange exclamation marker since that would take us to the hunt itself. And you can also see that I'm running here by holding down the circle button. 
and we have this stamina gauge. If you don't have a stamina gauge, you have to activate it from the menu. And see how I instantly replenished it then? That was because if you reset your key holding, uh, holding down the I circle button, when the bar is right about to finish, so it's right about to deplenish, nice. then yeah, you can actually reset it and have technically unlimited stamina. You can also eat buff food or equip the stamina accessory to keep it active. There it didn't work. So there are a few enemies around this location where this yep. hidden weapon is located. Let's take care of them. Now I've already mentioned that blue uh, loot drops are something you want to grab, but the red loot drops are even better. These are more powerful weapons and armour that you can pick up. In this case the Blade of Brenere, or Blade of Brenere, which is a fantastic two-handed weapon, and one I'm going to give to Noctis. It also has a fire element attached, and the enemy we're going to be facing for this quest is... You've guessed it, Fire Week. So it's a good item to go ahead and throw on there. And you can equip multiple weapons, as you can see. And you can switch them with the D-pad. So pressing up on the D-pad will obviously select your top weapon. In my case, the Ragnarok. Pressing left will select that new two-handed sword. And now we're going to head over to the quest itself at last. Assuming you've done everything that I've explained to you up until this point... The Bloodhorn is going to be an easy fight for you. And with that new blade we've collected, it's going to drop very, very quickly indeed. And once we've killed that, we'll get some nice experience. And the quest should update for us after a phone call. Ring, ring. And the quest now requires us to head back to Cindy. Uh, by the way, you can also loot the garage if you haven't already. There's a couple of items such as Phoenix Down we can grab from inside there. And once you speak to Cindy, you'll finish off the Mutant Marauder, the Regalia will be ours to control, and the next quest, the Erin Prince, the next story quest, will become active. Now before we actually carry on with the main quest, there's a couple of bits of optional side content we need to do. And the first is going to involve us running uh, to the east, to another hidden campsite, where it's hidden at the moment until we find it, then it will appear on the map. And we're going to stay there for the night, and that's going to kick off a special event known as a tour and certain campsites around the map will have tours associated with them which are type of side quest content that are unique to campsites and involve one of your party members so there will be enemies for you to fight along the way but you'll know when you reach the campsite because you'll have those elements uh, around the outside showing on the map so once again we're going to go ahead and absorb them and when we stay the night at this campsite selecting the camp option that is going to go ahead and kick off the tour. Now instead of waking up as normal, ready to carry on with the game, a cutscene is going to commence with Prompto. So he's the party member around which this particular tour is based. So when he gives us the option to start the tour, make sure we select Sure here. Otherwise we'll have to camp again in order to go ahead and do this. And this tour is called the Hallowed Hill of Hammerhead. And tours are green. So follow the green objective marker. And when you reach this objective, that's going to kick off another cutscene involving uh, Prompto and Cindy. So it's quite an interesting one, a funny one. I'll leave you to watch that in your own game. And once you've finished with the cutscene, you'll complete the tour here. And you'll get 20 AP, which is your reward. You always get AP as a reward for tours. And then you can wake up the next morning as normal and continue on. Now, if you're one of the more astute amongst us, you might remember there's still one more hunt we haven't yet done because we picked up three earlier, we've only done two. Well, that third hunt is actually fairly close to the campsite we've just stayed at, so we're going to get that done now. It's called Gorgeous in the Dust. You can go ahead and set it as the objective to track, and it is a level 7 hunt, so it's a little bit more challenging than the contact with, content we've covered so far, but still shouldn't be too much of a problem. If you need to heal up through the battle, just... Press R2 down and then you can select Potion and cast that on whoever it is that needs help with their health. So once Gorgeous in the Dust has been completed, we can actually fast travel back to the tipster here because our car is located there. So what we can do is head to the menu and select Return to Car from the Map Options and that will take us straight back to that location. So, how's it going, so once boys? back in Hammerhead, we're going to go ahead and speak to the tipster once more. Nice. That will automatically complete the third hunt of our playthrough here and we've got some nice skill already from that haven't we uh, after that we're going to head over to the regalia and drive for the first time we can select ignis to drive for us and the journey will then be automatic 
So we just go up to the regalia, hit the X key and select auto. And then we can either go to parking spot or map point. Map point is probably the one I use the most, to tell you the truth, since you can select more options with it for the automatic driving. And simply select the long with rest area, which is where the quest wants us to go. And then we can go ahead on our journey. You can change soundtracks if you want, using the options that you can see there. Play and stop with the up directional key. And then left and right once you're playing to select different tracks. If you hold those down left and right, you'll select different soundtracks as well. And I'll skip the journey there. And as we arrive, the quest updates. And once we get out of the car, we want to speak to the hotel manager. This will kick off a series of cutscenes uh, culminating in the quest updating uh, to telling us the new objective that we have to head to the Golden Key. And I think we're going to leave things there for today, folks. So I hope this first part of the walkthrough has been helpful to you. Uh, let me know what you think of this new kind of content for this game in the comments section. And if you're going to be following along with me if you're playing the game as well. So once again, we are hoping and aiming to complete all of the content in the game in a relatively systematic way as well. This is a big open world game. You can do a lot of stuff in all different orders. But yeah, I'm going to finish off here for today, folks. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.